Hello and welcome to this first video on the Microsoft Azure load balancing. Today we're going to look at load balanced endpoints and in later videos we're going to be looking at internal load balancing and we'll also be talking about traffic manager in video three of this series. For the demonstration of this video I'm going to be working with two virtual machines MGB Web 1 and MGB Web 2. These virtual machines are based being placed in a cloud service called MGB LBCS. On both virtual machines I've installed IIS and I've edited the default website so that we can indicate which virtual machine we're looking at. So if we take a quick look at MGB Web 1, so this is MGB Web 1 and we can see the IIS web page has been given extra text to indicate which computer we're on. And we can see the computer name there, this machine is also MGB Web 1. And if we take a look at MGB Web 2, so here MGB Web 2, we can see the extra text that has been added to indicate when we're on the computer named MGB Web 2. Now, if we take a look at the properties of either of these virtual machines, so if I go to MGB Web 1, for example, and we'll start off on its um, dashboard. Um, on the dashboard here we can see lots of information, but what I'm particularly interested in is the DNS name here on the right hand side. This is the DNS name of the cloud service. So all um, internet traffic that's sent to this cloud service on this address is directed to one of the virtual machines inside the cloud service. So this DNS name here, MGB MGB lbcs.cloudapp.net maps to this virtual IP address being assigned to us from Microsoft. Um, if we scroll back up and click on endpoints this virtual machine, you'll see there's two endpoints that are created for us. Now these endpoints are created for every Microsoft virtual machine that you create. One endpoint is for PowerShell and the second endpoint is for remote desktops. So if people connect to the cloud service name and use external port 5986, then they'll be redirected to PowerShell on MGB Web 1. If they use the um, cloud service URL and connect to 55872, they will be connected to the remote desktop uh, service on MGB Web 1. Now, if we were to look at MGB Web 2, we would say two endpoints for that machine as well, but mapping to different ports. So let's just click on MGB Web 2. So here you see, we've got the same uh, two endpoints, end but mapping to different ports. So if someone connects to port uh, 6433355, sorry, 6433555, that'll send them to the RDP port on MGB Web 2, 65088 to the PowerShell port on MGB Web 2. So these endpoints are important for redirecting external traffic to the correct machine and the correct service inside our cloud service. And what we're going to do, seeing as now we've got IIS installed and port 80 um, available, I'm going to say add here and I'm going to create another endpoint. So two radio buttons. The first one I'm going to select is uh, add a standalone endpoint. And we can select a name or choose our own name, but I'm going to choose HTTP so it fills in the details for me and what I'm going to do is map the public port 80 to the private port 80 on this virtual machine but crucially I'm going to say create a load balance set so if I just finish off this um, it asks for a load balance set name so we'll call this web set um, here um, because we're creating a load balance set we get to choose the probe protocol we have a TCP or HTTP. And what happens is that when uh, we create a load balance set, we need a way to determine if members of the set are up or not. So by default, it will use TCP and send a probe every 15 seconds to identify whether this virtual machine is there. If the virtual machine does not respond to the probe request, then traffic will not be sent to this virtual machine. I'm going to use TCP or a HTTP request um, for our probe set. 
I'll leave it as TCP. So I'll just try to create a minute to create this endpoint. And what we'll end up with is uh, an endpoint exposed through the VIP of the cloud service that maps to my virtual machine. So you can see the public port 80 there maps to private port 80. So what we need to do now is just go to the URL. And you can type that URL in uh, of the cloud service, or you can click on the cloud service itself, or click on cloud services, and then from the cloud service itself, just click on the URL. Um, because we're connecting to port 80 and it's a HTTP uh, request, it, it works. So you can see here we've been redirected to the website that's on MGB Web 1. Um, and that's the only server that's responding to this port 80 request at the minute. So what we need to do is add a second server that's going to respond to the same request. If we go back to uh, virtual machines and access MGB Web 2 and go to endpoints, on here we're going to say add a new endpoint. But this time we're going to say add an endpoint to an existing load balance set. And that's the load balance set we created in the previous steps. So we no need to pick out any other details here. We just say add that existing uh, endpoint to this load balance set. Uh, choose a name for the endpoint. We'll call this web. Protocol port 80. And then tick the box. So this will create the uh, endpoint now for um, MGB Web 2 virtual machine uh, and map it to our load balance set. So you can see here that the uh, public port 80 maps to private port 80 and it also maps to our load balance set. And if you click back on Web 1, that's exactly what we've got on Web 1 um, as well. Just a different name for the uh, endpoint. And that is, is basically it. What we should have now is uh, load balancing enabled through Microsoft's external load balancer uh, once this uh, process is completed. And you can see in the bottom right, the process itself is still um, finishing off here. So we'll just give that a minute to finish off creating the endpoint and then we'll test our load balancing. Cool, because as you can see here, the web point endpoint's been added, both virtual machines have been configured. So we'll just and get rid of those alerts. So now if I go to the cloud service again, click on uh, the URL, and again, it's, this works as using port 80, and here I have web one. And all we're gonna do is refresh the screen a few times and see if we can get redirected to the second machine. So fingers crossed, there we go. First time, um, it's redirected to MGB web two. Now you can refresh the screen now as many times as you want, um, it's not going to redirect you every time, um, but eventually, if you refresh your screen enough, we'll see a redirect to uh, the first web server again. Um, also, if you try, if you try um, opening up the connection in a different browser as well, you'll see a connection to um, the the different servers. So, if we try that now. So there you go, it takes a bit of refreshing, but I've got um, an Linux Explorer connection open up with a connection MD Web 2, and I've got a, a, um, a Chrome connection open up to MGB Web 1. So we've created there our load balanced uh, endpoints with our two uh, virtual machines. Both are in the same website now and both handling roughly half the traffic. Please watch out for other videos in this series where we will look at the internal load balancer, traffic manager, and also start to look at auto scaling as well with availability sets. Thank you.